I'm Brian Westwood with GeekWire Studios here at AWS Marketplace Seller Conference. Joined now by Jack Anderson, the Vice President of Worldwide Cloud Alliances at Databricks. First of all, thank you so much for being here. How's the show been for you so far? Hey Brian, thanks for having Databricks. Uh, it's fantastic, right? We, uh, we're a long-term uh, Amazon partner, having been um, you know, born on AWS as a company. And this morning I actually looked to see that we became part of the AWS Partner Network in April of 2015. So we've, we've been part of the family here for 10 years and uh, you know, super, super excited to be with you today. So part of the Partner Network, a lot of your customers access your products and services from AWS Marketplace. Tell us about that journey and why it's so key to your success. Yeah, well, you know, our, our founders uh, who come from academia, right, and uh, are, have been uh, strong proponents of the open source community, you know, the original creators of Apache Spark, uh, they uh, had a vision in uh, 2013 and 2014 that, um, you know, large data processing, data engineering would really be uh, done on a cloud service provider. So we were born on the cloud. We never shipped software on-prem. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's fundamental to us when, when you use Databricks, you're using it on a hyperscaler. Right. And so, you know, in some respects, co-selling started uh, very early for us because we were, we were present. And one of the um, primary tenets we have is that customers control their own data. So the data is in an object store such as S3. And with an open data format, you know, we're able to co-architect with that data over the long term. So we don't move data into a closed proprietary environment. We avoid high cost and lock-in and all, the, all those buzzwords. I love that. Let's talk specifically about customer success stories. You've had a lot of wins. Tell us about one, dive deep. Yeah, so you know the one I like to use, uh, and uh, a company that presented at Data and AI Summit in San Francisco recently, uh, encourage everyone to watch the, the short YouTube presentation, is Block, mm, right? Yeah. And, and Block is a, a super innovative, uh, disrupting company, you know, with two uh, huge um, consumer and, and business focused apps, uh, Square and Cash App. And uh, they operate, you know, five or six different lines of business and they needed to have a, um, a, a single data platform where they could federate their businesses and bring their data together. And using uh, Databricks with our lake house architecture, sure. right, they have embraced Anthropic Claude to build uh, an internal open AI, uh, open source agent that they codenamed Goose. <laughs> and uh, so what Goose is, is Goose is, uh, takes their proprietary data and takes the LLM uh, models of Claude, uh, Sonnet uh, 3.5 and Sonnet 3.7, mm -hmm. and trains their agents on their own data. So now uh, the data is specific to their business and um, originally started as a uh, assistant for writing code, and they quickly saw that they could bring um, data and analytics to a broader audience inside the company. And so, for example, their engineers are, are getting eight to 10 hours a week back in productivity, right? So it's a great example of how, you know, from a data platform with an agentic AI uh, structure powered by MLflow, which we, as I noted in the keynote this morning, we have 25 million downloads a month of MLflow, and that manages the entire MLOps uh, lifecycle. And so uh, having a single platform that has the right open storage formats, that has uh, unified governance, so not only governance for uh, your data, but governance for your AI models, governance for your dashboards, right? They're able to really scale this internally and bring uh, productivity to new levels. And I think, you know, they wanted to, to they had a long-term goal of uh, Gen AI was going to give 30% productivity boost to their internal employee population. And uh, they're well on their way with uh, Claude on, on Databricks on AWS. That's fantastic, and it's great to see those customer success stories. I want to get to AI, ML, and your keynote in just a moment, but before we do, tell us about what features specifically of AWS Marketplace have really helped you bring your product in sort of that product-led growth strategy that we're all talking about. Yeah, so I mentioned that you know we're born on AWS, right? We did our first 100 million of revenue on AWS, and um, you know we learned a lot in, in architecting on AWS, and um, the, in 2018, we entered into the marketplace private offer uh, workflow. So, you know, one of our mental models uh, working with AWS is that we want customers to get the same benefits 
whether they select a native service or an ISV mm -hmm. uh, solution like Databricks. And being part of the ISV Accelerate program and Marketplace also brings co-selling benefits such as seller compensation, right. but more importantly, uh, AWS pioneered a program called the uh, Workload Migration Program, WMP. So AWS leans in with Databricks when we go to a customer yeah. uh, and we look at a, a demand plan over one to three years and uh, the number of use cases, AI-driven use cases and data uh, warehousing use cases, and we take that demand plan and we put it into a private offer. And so in 2018, that's where we started scaling our marketplace transactions. And when a customer does that, of course they get you know, the benefits that AWS offers and the private pricing sure. arrangement of drawdown on their AWS commitment. <laughs> so um, we recognize that uh, that was the first step. The second step was getting into the, the on-demand um, world. And in 2022, we launched PayGo, so pay as you go on AWS marketplace. Um, and you know, what we, the challenge of being a SaaS solution in a marketplace yeah. is that you have to take your platform and integrate it into the cloud platform. So you, you know, uh, the, the people that are adopting Databricks have to have the right access controls to onboard into their virtual private cloud environments. And it's, it's quite complex, it's not an easy thing. I think, so with, with AWS, we uh, co-engineered the SaaS quick launch uh, feature and functionality and what it does is it takes uh, and reduces the number of steps required to get started on Databricks. And we went from a crazy number, like 60 plus steps, down to you know, a handful of clicks. And what that's really done is that the customers that come and want to experiment and get started on AWS Marketplace, right? Um, uh, we call those subscribers. And those subscribers are converting at a uh, 5X rate now that we've done this joint engineering. So, more than just a co-sell program, when you start to do the deeper engineering between the solutions and especially how that uh, relates to adopting, um, you know, adopting the platform. Tell me about, you talk about co-engineering solutions with AWS. How has that been from a partnership level with the team? What sort of support do you get from the AWS Marketplace team? Yeah, so we get uh, full stack support from uh, you know, uh, the product management, to engineering, to the go-to-market business development function, to our advisor capacity. Um, and you know, we, we announced last, uh, last year that we entered into a, a multi-year strategic collaboration agreement with AWS. And you know, that is where we both kind of uh, put down some skin in the game on what mm -hmm. we're going to engineer together. And one of the things that we announced in that was that we were going to do model serving using AWS's uh, GPU chipset, Tranium, right? And so um, we're committed, our engineering teams are working together to you know, really drive more efficient, uh, cost-effective, scalable uh, processing capability for uh, model serving. And um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the other thing that was really cool, and I talked about in the keynote, was yeah. the buy with AWS functionality. Uh, let me tell you about this, because it's, it's neat. Um, you know, having a consumer experience, when a customer comes to Databricks Direct to start with Databricks, they start with a free trial. Yeah. And from that free trial, when it ends, they have the option to use a credit card, which most customers have traditionally done. Sure. Or now, they can just simply click a button called Buy with AWS. Mm -hmm. and we've engineered that into the product, nice. right? And so far, we've seen over 700 customers use the Buy with AWS button. And this is important because if you think of the uh, personas and the practitioners that are using our platform, they have a cloud budget, they have a commit with AWS, uh, and they need to be able to link these two things together. So um, we're seeing a, a tremendous success with that, and I think you know, that'll be uh, something we really build on going forward. I love that. You talked about a number of things in the keynote, and I promised we'd get back to that. The buy with AWS helps the procurement process, yeah? It makes it easier for somebody maybe that doesn't have the corporate credit card in their pocket. Yeah, well, and sometimes these corporate credit cards have limitations sure. and failure rates, and uh, you know they have they have internal budgets, they have team budgets that are allocated, um, and then when they use the buy with AWS button, they unlock the features they have with AWS, their you know their discounts that they've right. they've got as a benefit. So um, and not to mention the spend requirements. To that keynote, tell us some of the highlights. Give us a top level view of what you discussed today on stage. Yeah, well, I talked about you know we're you know we, we uh, launched private offer in 2018, PayGo in 2022, uh, and now we're at a point where because of our our close uh, partnership, 
we're really driving new opportunities. We're using um, some of the propensity to buy data. This is proprietary information. AWS doesn't share with us what signals they have on their customers, but they enrich that with some other industry data. And we identify across industries, customers that are probably ready for the data intelligence platform. Yeah. And it kind of narrows in on you know, the customers that we want to approach proactively uh, to help them get the benefits. Databricks has innovated a lot with AWS. What's next? What's on the horizon? So I'm excited to talk about what's next in two dimensions, one with AWS and one what Databricks is bringing to market next. Uh, you know, we've been the number one SaaS listing in AWS Marketplace for 14 months running. And uh, our mindset is that uh, we want to be uh, appear like a first party solution. And the AWS Marketplace team is doing a lot around discoverability and searchability using you know, new AI techniques, workflows, and motions that are going to help us identify which customers are going to be most likely to adopt by industry. And so we're excited about um, you know, the, the capabilities that uh, AWS Marketplace team is going to be delivering. And then with the data intelligence platform, uh, you know, we talked about the Lakehouse architecture. At Data and AI Summit, we, uh, we announced a new uh, paradigm called Lake Base, which really brings an OLTP database to the Lakehouse, right, for your uh, our enterprise customers that have a need for, you know, uh, uh, sub-second um, type of responses. And what's really cool that is, uh, you know, we acquired a company called Neon that has a fully managed serverless Postgres SQL database. We think Postgres is, is going to become, you know, the clear winner uh, in the open source database space. And we're really excited to bring this to customers that want to take that foundation of data that's unified and governed, run it through uh, agent bricks and ML flow to create agentic architectures and build applications that need that OLTP uh, database, a modern database. And so uh, you'll see more uh, coming from Databricks uh, in the near future. I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Jack Anderson, Vice President of Worldwide Cloud Alliances with Databricks. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios.